Hey YouTube, this is Bill. Uh, the last video I did was a large battery system with the new JBL Mark II with a pair of Maui Thumb Goes. So it's quite a bit of equipment to carry out there. So this is the opposite, a, a smaller, much smaller system. And one of my great frustrations about the battery powered offerings out there, the speakers are wonderful at this point, but there is pretty much no battery powered subwoofers. Now, people are gonna mention the Yorkville. So I'll mention that right off the bat. Yorkville just came out with a battery powered subwoofer, but uh, I haven't heard it to tell you the truth. I've seen some videos about it, but it doesn't seem very powerful at a hundred watts, maximum 175 watts, and it's close to $700. And it's a small cabinet and physics tells me uh, subwoofers need larger cabinets or strong amplifiers to perform. So I'm not really interested in that. In that. I don't think it's gonna do much, especially outdoors where I play. So I've come up with my own concoction and we'll see if this, if anybody is interested. Most people uh, might not be interested. It kind of looks a little strange and it's not cheap. So the subwoofer that I'm using, battery powered subwoofer, like I said, this is, this is the only, this only second option on the market that you have if you wanna go all battery powered. That I'm using the Maui 5 Go, the subwoofer unit. And that's an, it's an eight inch unit. And I'm use, using the battery, the stick that you see into the, into the base is the battery power. So I'm not using the top end. I'm not using the top end drivers and I'm using solely the subwoofer and it sounds pretty good. It adds the fullness that the, the Bose sub one is missing. So I definitely think it's an, it's successful. It's working for me, but I don't know how many people would go out and buy the Maui. Uh, cause it is, uh, it's not so cheap. It's $900 at this time. If you wanted to just use it for a subwoofer. Some people are probably wondering, well, why aren't you using the top column? Well, if I use the top column and turn up the gain, then I'm pretty much, um, I'm not getting the sub. I'm getting a lot of high end and I don't really need that. The Bose S1 Pro is giving me all the high end clarity I need. I want just the lows. So that's what this system is all about. Very simple system. It's only one cable connecting from the, the throughout of the Bose S1 Pro, I'll show you that in a little while, into the, the Maui 5 Go into the XLR in. And it has a gain control on the sub where I can tailor it to match the bows. And it sounds, it sounds very acceptable. It's, it's adding the low end that the bows is definitely missing. So I'm thinking I'm presenting this video for the people who already have the Maui 5 Go and already have a Bose S1 Pro or the other way around. Maybe you have the Maui 5 Go and maybe after this video, you might purchase the S1 Pro. So let me show you my setup. Uh, the, it's, I'm using the S1 Pro as my source. It's on Bluetooth. I'm setting the volume at uh, one o'clock. That's about as high as I like to play it. After one o'clock, I start getting hiss. So then again, uh, there is my Bluetooth connection. I'm going one quarter inch line out. And let me show you the cable. It's a TRS cable. You wanna use this particular cable. And that's in comparison to your standard guitar cable. TRS is a balanced cable and the Bose line out is balanced. So I'm going from that line out into the Maui 5 Go right here. And I'm going into input, left input. And that is XLR male. You might have seen my previous video about the Maui 5 Go. Uh, this is one of the features I really love that it has a very visible battery indicator. So here you see three green. I just charge it so it's all fully charged 
And if you just press that button, even when it's off, uh, the indicators come on and it's very visual, tells you exactly how you're doing battery wise. So that's a really nice feature. Okay, so here is the setup on the Maui 5 Go. Again, you see the XLR in to channel one. And I'm using the line input right here. I have that at about three o'clock. Then I have my master. That's where I'm controlling uh, my sub sound. So it depends on the, on the track. I could lower it or raise it. You might want to start at 12 noon. I've been getting some nice sub integration with the sub one, the, I'm sorry, with the uh, S1 Pro at about two o'clock or three o'clock. High boost, I'm not really using that because I'm not using the top. I can turn that down. And here is my sub level again at three o'clock. I don't want to turn it to maximum. Uh, it starts to get a little booming. So this is an eight inch subwoofer and it does definitely perform. The Maui 5 Go, as I've always said, it, it has a nice low end. I love the fact that it has a sub control that you can dial it up or down that many other uh, units don't have. Matter of fact, the new JBL Mark II um, doesn't have a separate sub control I, and I miss that. So that's, that's a definitely a selling feature for me for the Maui 5 Go. Go over some specs for this system. Uh, so the Maui 5 Go, the subwoofer goes down to 50 Hertz, which is pretty good. I know my big subwoofers, my big 12-inch subwoofers, they go down to 40, so 50 is getting close. But again, uh, when it gets loud, that's when a small subwoofer will start uh, breaking up compared to a larger one. The Maui 5 Go is rated at 200 watts RMS, and I don't know, uh, I can't tell you how that is divided as far as the top and what goes to the bottom. And it also peaks out at 100 watt peak. So that's pretty good uh, numbers. The subwoofer section is super light. I, I just love it. It has a great handle. It carries easily in the hand. And that's, it's less than 20 pounds, 19.6 pounds is the subunit itself. And when the Maui 5 Go has their columns attached, it goes pretty loud. It can go up to 102.7 decibels that I've got it in the home. Of course, they rate it at 120. I've never got anything like that, but I have gotten up to close to 103. And the Bose S1 Pro, uh, I've only gotten up to close to about 98 dB. So it's a huge difference. But again, I, I really, as far as this system, talking about adding just a subunit of the Maui 5 Go, I really don't know how much power they've, um, that is going to the sub. But hearing is telling, and I, and I like the sound. It definitely adds a nice full end. It's not gonna thump like a nice 12 inch or 15 inch dedicated subwoofer. But like I said, there's no other battery options on the market. This is it. Unless you want to look at that Yorkful for $700 and that thing, it only puts out a hundred Watts. So I don't know if it's worth it. And I've never heard it, but I don't know what kind of performance that's going to give you. So this has kind of been my missing link. I've been looking for a, a battery powered subwoofer. I'm sure JBL is working on it. They can, if they can put out the JBL Party Box 300 that has all kinds of low end, I don't know why they can't just put out a battery powered dedicated subwoofer. Same thing with Bose, the, the, the great Bose S1 Pro at 36 pounds. I don't know why they can't um, add a little more pounds to that and add the, the battery, internal battery, but I'm sure they're working on it. For our sound demo, when I point to the Bose S1 Pro like I'm doing now, that means I've turned the, the subwoofer off or muted it. When I go down to the Maui 5 Go, you'll see me turn the gain up to engage the sub. Hopefully you'll hear that difference. But um, from my past videos, unfortunately, low frequencies doesn't really show up on, from the microphones I'm using. I'm just using my iPhone microphone.
that's it. I uh, hope you heard the difference. Uh, that sub is not too bad. I'm telling you, it adds that f fullness that the sub, this S1 Pro is so desperately needing. And as far as the market, I'm gonna have to say there is nothing out there. The Yorkville XMM, XM Mobile 8 sub at 100 watts at $670. Again, I have to say I haven't heard it. So people are gonna say it's not fair, but just, I don't think it's gonna perform. I've never heard a subwoofer at 100 watts, 175 watts max to give you any kind of base. The only thing I can compare it to is I do have a Fishman sub. It's called the Sub 300 and it's 300 watts. And it's, it's, it's for an acoustic guitarist. And it does add some low end for acoustic guitar, but it's hardly really a subwoofer. And this performs better than that 300 watt Fishman. So um, I might be the first on the web to come up with a, a viable battery powered subwoofer. You've, you've seen it here first. I wanna thank my 400 uh, subscribers I just got yesterday, my fourth, 400th subscriber, that was a milestone. And uh, maybe JBL or Bose, they should contact me because I'm sure they're working on this. I think JBL is going to be first. They, have, they are really in the lead as far as battery-operated um, speakers. So I, I don't see it as a huge stretch to come up with just a subwoofer. They're going to make a lot of money when they come up with it. So many Bose S1 Pro owners have been asking for a matching sub for a while. And just, again, going back to that comparison with... Um, the Yorkville sub. The Bose sub one has close to 500 watts. So again, if someone out there, JBL, Bose, can give me uh, maybe 400 watts with a battery at 40, watt, 40 pounds, I would, I would buy that instantly. That's something I'm looking for. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. And maybe this might meet someone's needs. If you own the Maui 5 Go by itself, I would definitely pair it up with an S1 Pro. It sounds pretty good, and they're super lightweight. Both pieces together, one speaker, one speaker stand, and the Maui 5 Go is super light at 20, a little over 20 pounds. Hope you enjoyed. This is Bill.